Hi, my name is Lisa Dillman. I am a literary translator, and I would like to read for you um, some of a book I recently translated, which is Pilar Quintana's beautiful novel, Los Abismos, uh, in English, Abyss. Um, this novel, uh, translating it, was kind of like reliving my childhood. The novel is, on the one hand, completely embedded in its time and place, which is Cali, Colombia in the 1980s, so absolutely not my uh, place growing up, and yet the experiences that Claudia, the protagonist, goes through are pretty universal. So it was nearly impossible for me not to actually feel her emotions, things like the intensity of her desires, the need for a very specific kind of ice cream, the exact scent of a certain lip gloss, um, but also far darker things like an atmosphere in which uh, prescribed gender roles are asphyxiating and depression is not discussed. So I'm going to read to you a, an excerpt uh, from midway through the book where Claudia talks about her mother's obsession with women who have committed suicide. <clears throat> okay. In the before times, my mother was obsessed with Natalie Wood, a famous actress who was found dead floating face down in the ocean, in her nightgown and wool socks and a red jacket, my mother said, with her hair fanned out in the water like a jellyfish. For weeks, Mama talked of nothing else. Natalie Wood's husband, Robert Wagner, was also famous, also an actor. The couple had been out on their yacht with Christopher Walken, yet another famous actor, who she was filming a movie with. The three of them drank, had dinner, drank some more. It was the dead of night, the sea was rough, Natalie said goodnight and went to bed, leaving the men in the living room. Her husband said that sometime later, when he was going to bed, he realized she wasn't in their cabin. And when he searched the yacht, he realized the rubber dinghy was gone too and assumed she'd taken it out. So he waited up and then after a while got worried and radioed for the authorities. The authorities found her the next day, according to my mother, and ruled her death accidental. Accidental my ass, Mama said. No one but the authorities believed the husband's story. Who goes out barefoot in a nightgown in the middle of the night in an inflatable dinghy in dark, rough waters? Everybody thought the husband had found her in the cabin and, jealous of Christopher Walken, had a fight with her and threw her overboard. Everybody but Mama. If he'd thrown her overboard, she'd have taken off her jacket. She'd have swum or screamed, grab onto the yacht or the dinghy. What then, I asked. She jumped overboard herself. Section break. I couldn't find Natalie Wood in the new issue of Ola magazine. I did, though, find Princess Grace of Monica, whose car, of, pardon, of Monaco, whose car crash death my mother had also been obsessed with. One afternoon, while I was doing my homework, she walked into the study with the magazine held open in one hand. Listen to this, she said, reading a few lines, which explained that one part of the road had a very sharp curve where drivers had to use their brakes and steer carefully. Then she looked up. The princess didn't. That's awful. She kept driving straight, plowed the retaining wall right down. Can you imagine? Terrible. She was tired of all her obligations. What? She picked the most dangerous route and didn't even break on the curve. You think she didn't break on purpose? She hated driving and had chauffeurs, but that day, despite having a headache, she insisted on driving herself. And she drove off the cliff on purpose? I'd seen the photos in those magazines, her upside down car in the ravine, without caring about her family, photos of her funeral, the pain on her husband's and children's faces, photos of Stephanie, the youngest child who was in the car with her and had to, and had to wear a neck brace for a while. Or what would happen to Stephanie? She was tired of her obligations, Mama repeated. Section break. Papa, are there people who don't want to live? It was Sunday and Kali was deserted, all for us. People who don't want to live. Mama said, she told you there were people who didn't want to live? Like Karen Carpenter, she killed herself by starvation. We were standing at the mouth of the Aguatá. Pardon. We were standing at the mouth of the Aguacatal River. 
Your mother told you that? Yes. The carpenter woman had a disease. The waters of the Kali flowed gently between the rocks. Well, Princess Grace of Monaco drove off a cliff. That was an accident. How do you know? They said it on the news. What about Natalie Wood? Also an accident. They said it on the news? Yes. The smaller Aguacatal joined the Cali River timidly, as though attempting not to make a fuss. Have you ever wanted to kill yourself? I asked. No. My father, whose gaze was fixed straight ahead at the stone wall of the old house between the rivers, turned and looked at me. You? Me either. He smiled. What about Mama? I asked, my voice as small as the aguacatal. Of course not, he assured me. I don't know anyone who wants to kill themselves. I smiled too, and then ran off to climb a tree with the horizontal trunk. And then, Gloria Inés killed herself. <laughs>